let's talk about the Dumb and Dumber soundtrack. So I was obsessed with Jim Carrey as a kid. So in 1994, that's his big breakout year where he had The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, and one more movie, yes, Dumb and Dumber and Ace Ventura, all in the same year where he became the biggest star on the planet. Uh, so Dumb and Dumber, the soundtrack comes out. And you guys had the very first song on the soundtrack. Like you can't have better placement than that. So you have the ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know that that was a cover until right now doing my research. I always associate it with you guys. I didn't know it was an ecstasy cover. So that's cool that I just found that out. Um, Top five hit in Canada. It's, I mean, it's, it's such a cult favorite movie. And normally you don't say, you know, a cult fan favorite when it's a movie that made hundreds of millions of dollars. It's one of the greatest and most popular comedy movies of all time, but there's such a cult following. Like people are obsessed with that movie. Uh, what did it mean to you guys to have the song placed in that movie? And and you guys actually recorded, uh, you filmed a music video in Toronto, Nathan Phillips Square uh, with Jeff Daniels there. Can you talk about kind of the whole experience of the music video, the song placed in the movie, uh, whatever you can give us about that? It's That's exciting, man, as a Jim Carrey fan. Yeah. Um, so that one, you have to back up a little bit with that one. Um, and just because there's my head's moving too fast um and i a name is slipping me right now but you can give it to me uh star yellowstone um yeah kevin costner kevin costner thank you uh and then you know to, uh, no disrespect to kevin i just sometimes i you know, look at my own kids and i go what's your name <laughs> um so we were we we were uh touring quite extensively and we thought we should break up the monotony, uh, perceived monotony of the bass baritone on stage. We should get Ellen up singing more stuff. And uh, so, okay, what does Ellen want to sing? And uh, so we, we tossed around some ideas. Dan and Brad are both really big XTC fans and Kiss. I don't know how those two fit together, but <laughs> uh, so they're big XTC fans. And we they used to talk about oranges and lemons all the time. Uh, this, I think Skylarking was another one that used to talk about all the time. And um, so uh, Peter Pumpkinhead was, was a tune that was like Ellen said, well, yeah, yeah. Why don't we do Peter Pumpkinhead? That like, that would be fun to do. So, okay, let's put Peter Pumpkinhead in, in, in the show. I think House of Blues in Los Angeles was, I think, the third or fourth show that we played. Ellen would know better than I would, but um, I think it was like the third or fourth show that we played that Ellen sang Peter Pumpkinhead on. And uh, it was a nice, nice break in the show, and we were looking forward to it. Hey, you know, here we are, nice full house here at House of Blues in Los Angeles. Uh, now, I don't know if you know the, the, the building, but the way that it, in Los Angeles, the, the old House of Blues, which is not there anymore. But uh, when it opened up into a club, it was a restaurant. And but when it, it would open up into a club, like the entire second floor would just open. Uh, it was, and, and, the, and all the people that were eating in the restaurant now had balcony seats to the to the show. Uh, it was very, very, very cool place to play. Well, that particular night, Kevin Costner was there with and I, I can't remember, but the producer for Dumb and Dumber, and uh, and and, and so it's we, the we, uh, the brothers, isn't it? The Farrelly brothers, Farrell brothers. Uh, well, it was one particular person that was okay. there with, I, and I can't. I wish I could tell you, I couldn't remember Kevin Costner. How do you expect me to remember? <laughs> so, um, after the show, they they came down and and they wanted to meet with us and stuff like that. And uh, he said, "Hey, I really like that." you know, that uh, Peter Pumpkin heads, you know, I'm, I'm making this movie. It's uh, called Dumb and Dumber. And and I, I think this would be like a, a, a really good addition to the, to the film. Have, have you guys recorded it? And it was, well, no, we just, it's like, it's an XTC song and we've just put it into the repertoire for Ellen to sing. So he said, well, if you guys would be willing to record that, I'd love to put it in, in, into my movie. And uh, we thought about it for about four seconds and uh, went, came back to Winnipeg. And uh, at that point in time, Brad was living on Jesse, had a studio called God of Thunder. And we went into the studio and man, we, we, we ripped that off in, in, a, in a couple of days. Uh, we had this really small little drum booth. And I remember being cramped in there, but you know, I had to 
kick the shit out of the drums and it was it was it was really good times lots of energy and to take it over the top uh we brought tom lord algae in to mix it and so it was mixed in brad's little studio so it wasn't mixed in some big place and then so we we handed it in and he said yeah this is this is really great this is fantastic this is wonderful so off we go uh we we hand him the song and now because the movie's coming out and it's in the and the movie's getting lots of publicity uh the song is genuinely a great song so we said well let's let's do the video for it um i can't remember the circumstances that led because jim carrey was unavailable we were hoping to have both jim and jeff and uh, uh but it I, jim had some other thing that he had to honor i can't quite remember but jeff was available and 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 he he was like yeah sure let's let's do it and it was like well you know like it's a music video we don't have like a, a budget that you would pr probably command and i, I like just a, the wonderful human being that jeff daniels is was like well this is this is about doing something fun so let's do this and let it, let's let it be fun and and you know the, the the whole wearing the pumpkin thing and he was an absolute gem uh to, to work with and he and he brought just a, a great energy and it, the, there was stuff like we worked him to, to the bone because i mean we i think we had him for three days and i and i think we said well how many hours are there in three days okay and it's 36 blah, 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 uh you know carry the one and we used them every minute uh and he never complained uh and he you know he'd come and he'd, he was, was eating with us and uh, we said, okay, you know, this happened, this happens, kind of like you were saying, we can do some editing on the fly. There was a few other things that happened. We said, okay, well, can we do this instead? And he just, yeah, sure, yeah, let's do it. Let's let's go out and do it. And and uh, um, I think he showed up a couple of times to a couple of shows that we did after that, uh, just to shake the hands. I don't know if he was actually came to the show or just came in to shake hands and, and, and say, thanks guys. It was good fun. Um, but it was just, a, a, a again, more often than not, you hear horror stories about people being prima donnas and everything else, but we just never had that. You know, he was, he was fabulous. The, the whole process of recording the song for the, you know, the, and the way that it came about was just a bunch of nice people saying, Hey, this, this seems like a really good idea. Let's put our forces together and make it happen. And again, that snare sound on that song is incredible. And I, it sounds like it's a mix of you, the drums and having uh, Tom Lord Al uh, doing the mixing. I mean, that's, that seems like the, the formula to that insane snap of a snare. Yeah, yeah, he like he likes to. Uh, I mean, you want to get technical geek stuff, you know. He likes to take drums. He loves compressing the drums, and and he and he he works really hard. He mixes at an insane level, uh, so you know he says he likes to make everything work to stand out of the mix, as opposed to making a mix and have everything stand out. He likes to make it work to stand out. And and I think that that's where you know he understands the balance of of doing that now. The fact that he loves drums is is another thing, right? Because he likes to hear it. He wants he likes putting his stamp on it. So Dumb and Dumber was directed by the Farrelly brothers with Troy Miller. Is that who you're thinking of, Troy Miller, or was someone else? Yeah, I you know I'd be guessing. I'm, I'm, right. not gonna, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to pull the shades over your eyes. We we have more important things to get to, and there's nothing more important than the kind words sent in from the following person who who really uh, shines in that song. So this is from Ellen Reed. I got a quote here from the great and powerful Ellen Reed. Uh, she says, where to begin with the amazingness that is the Dorge? Consistently positive, sensible, silly, smart, and talented. He is always looking for different ways of looking at things, finding a fresh take on what others would have ignored. He is the best of us. And without him, touring would be boring. He brightens my day on the regular. And she leaves you with this. His farts smell like a week overdue folk festival porta potty. Kind <laughs> words from Ellen. That is, uh, that is the, that's, yeah, you got to love Ellen. And I do love her dearly. And the fact that she would say something kind about me is, is uh, again, I little little tear right about here somewhere. Uh, you know, Ellen is uh, in a lot of cases she's my savior. Uh, when when we're on the road, we, we can 
we can just drop the road life and be silly and have a good time and we can tear each other up and we do uh, we can tear each other up and, and no one gets offended no one gets right it's all done in, with good humor and 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 good fun uh i would point that right back at her uh she's i i very rare do you meet someone as intelligent uh as what ellen brings to the table and she's never one to sit there and take the glory Unless, of course, there's money attached to it, then, you know, this is, she always wants, you know, that extra loony. Throw that extra loony in there at her. But, yeah, I'm not going to get into cutting her up because that's that's something that we save for each other on the road. <laughs>